Welcome back. Let's dive into the next topic of the Android attack servers. This is a coding issue and it's called SQL injection. So probably most of you are familiar with SQL injection. So you have different type of databases. In Android, the default local database is SQLite. So this is a relational database, but it's just a file on the file system. And of course, injections are possible if you don't code properly. Let's quickly look into the documentation. So SQL injection is also mentioned on the Android developer website and SQL injection exploits vulnerable application by inserting code into SQL statements. So it's related to input validation, to access the underlying database beyond their intentional exposed interfaces. So of course you can corrupt data, read sensitive data, maybe bypass login functionality. So the regular type of impact of a SQL injection. And yeah, if you're familiar with SQL injection, there are different type of SQL injections. Also look into the OWASP documentation if you're not familiar with it. So there's a union-based SQL injection, error-based, etc. But the most common type of exploitation is if you just replace the query or add, for example, a statement like R1 is 1 at the end of the SQL statement, then if you still get results, that's an indication that your code is vulnerable. And a SQL database configured in an Android app is usually handled via a content provider. It is not mandatory, but a combination of a content provider which can handle files with different type of storage, but also SQLite. And mitigations for SQL injection is, in this case, they call it replaceable parameters, but usually it's called also prepared statements. So if you don't concatenate the query by just string concatenation, but if you replace it with a question mark, that's usually the syntax for prepared statements, which is also mentioned here. So this is how you can prevent it. Also use prepared save libraries and we can go to the OWASP link testing for injection flaw. So in this case, the Android manifest contains an content provider related to this SQL database. And then there is a source code snippet where there is some unsafe handling of parameters. And in case it's a content provider within Android, if you're on the rooted device, then you can also exploit it by providing the statement, the SQL statement via different syntax in the command line. So you can do content query, then the URL of the content provider, and then you can specify the where statement and maybe exploit it via an R statement. So within Android, first thing you can do is search for content providers in the Android manifest and also look into the source code. If you can find something about SQL database classes and also about how the queries are built up. So as I said earlier, if there is a content provider, you can exploit it also directly without using the app. Let's look into one simple example of Android Goat. So again, if we look into the APK of Android Goat and we go into the Android manifest, then surprisingly there is no content provider. So this is a little bit of different uh, application, but there is something with content and with SQL. So I would expect something is possible, but what we can also do, we can search in the source code for the word SQL, and then we can find different classes. And if we look a little bit further, there's also a functionality to retrieve users from a database. And this one looks pretty unsafe. Select star from users where username is, and then with the string builder, it's just appending the username from some input. So again, make sure you have the Android Goat application. Then go to input validations. And in input validations, we click on SQL injection. And here you can try to exploit it. So find all users. So this one searches for a username. What I could do is I could add a single quote. And now I already see SQLite error. So let's say I want to do something like this, or one is one, and then add it with a comment. Now we already can exploit this. Limit one might be something. And now we only get one user from the database. So limit 10 will probably give us all the users. So this is already a simple exploitation. 
username test password test456. This is a very simple example of a SQL injection, so I would also recommend you to look into other examples. We have a hacking lab for SQL injection and also try to do something with a compiler. So this was it for the SQL injection. Also try out the other examples in the labs. This was it. Hope to see you in the next video.